pain control after surgery. For most patients, their greatest source of anxiety when considering a major operation is whether or not their pain will be controlled afterwards. This may be the most important video that you watch in this series, because this one will tell you what the scientific evidence says about pain pills and pain control, and how you can use this information to your advantage. How well do opiates work for pain? Opioid pain medications, such as hydrocodone or oxycodone, are any pain medications that are structurally or functionally related to morphine. These medications have been used for thousands of years in the treatment of pain and mental illness. Many people mistakenly believe that opioids are powerful pain relievers. However, recent studies have shown that taking acetaminophen and ibuprofen together is actually more effective in treating pain. Let's look at what the scientific evidence says about pain pills and pain control, and how you can use this information to your advantage. We'd like to introduce a concept called Number Needed to Treat, which goes by the abbreviation NNT. NNT stands for how many patients you need to treat in order to achieve a desired outcome. Here's an example. Let's imagine that you have 10 people coming over to your house for lunch. You ask them how hungry they are on a scale of 1 to 10, and they all say that they are somewhere between 7 to 9 out of 10 on the hungry scale, which means that they are pretty hungry. You look in the refrigerator and start doing some mental math. If you made 10 steak sandwiches and there weren't any vegetarians in the group, chances are that all 10 people would say they weren't hungry after they finished lunch. Success rate, 100%. NNT equals 1. If you made cucumber sandwiches and half of the guests were construction workers, chances are that 50% of the people would still be hungry after lunch. Success rate, 50%. NNT equals 2. This means that you had to feed two people cucumber sandwiches in order to get the desired effect of having one person say they weren't hungry anymore. And let's say that you just had some carrot sticks. In this case, 90% of the people are probably still going to be hungry after lunch. Success rate, 10%. NNT equals 10. You have to feed 10 people carrot sticks in order to achieve your goal of having at least one person say they aren't hungry anymore. When we look at studies that compare the NNT values of different medications, a lower number means the medication is more effective, and a higher number means the medication is less effective. Pain is estimated with the visual analog pain score, which rates pain on a scale of 1 to 10. Since it is not realistic to expect any medication to take your pain score down to zero, our goal is to reduce your pain by 50%. If you start out at an 8 out of 10 in pain, and we give you a medication that made your pain a 4 out of 10, chances are you would be happy and you would say that the medication worked. That's what we call success, a 50% reduction in pain. We have basically three types of medications that work well for pain. Anti-inflammatory medications, called NSAIDs, like ibuprofen and naproxen. Tylenol, which is also called acetaminophen and opiates, such as oxycodone and oxycontin. When packaged with Tylenol, opiates are also sold as medications like Percocet, Norco, and Vicodin. All medications have side effects. NSAIDs can cause stomach irritation. Tylenol is hard on the liver in high doses. But the opiates have the worst side effects. Opiates are derived from the poppy plant, and they have been around for thousands of years as opium, heroin, and morphine. Most people recognize the potential dangers of opium, heroin, and morphine, and they assume that they are very strong pain relievers. In reality, opiate medications are only moderately effective at reducing pain, and they have serious side effects. The side effects of opiate medications include constipation, urinary retention, drowsiness, withdrawal symptoms, and they can cause drug addiction. When researchers looked at what it takes to achieve the desired outcome of a 50% reduction in pain when patients are in acute pain, 
the results are surprising. It turns out that the most effective medication for achieving a 50% reduction in pain is a combination of 500 milligrams of Tylenol plus 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. This combination has an NNT of 1.6. That means if you gave the 500 milligrams of Tylenol plus 200 milligrams of ibuprofen to 16 people in acute pain, 10 of them would say that their pain went down by 50%. That's considered a pretty effective drug. In contrast, opiate medications are much less effective. For example, a 15 milligram tablet of oxycodone has an NNT of 4.6. This means that you would have to treat 46 people in order to get 10 people to say that their pain decreased by 50%. This is way less effective than Tylenol plus ibuprofen, and all 46 people are at risk for serious side effects. The truth is that most opiate medications have powerful psychological effects. They have the greatest effect on the stress and anxiety that accompanies acute pain, but they don't do much for the physical pain. Since these medications can cause serious addiction issues, we believe that there are much better ways to manage the psychological effects of pain, such as meditation, visualization, and breathing exercises. Two additional reminders about the dangers of opiate medications. Recently, the Centers for Disease Control and the FDA have issued specific warnings about combining opiate pain medications with benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines like Valium, Ativan, and Xanax are used as muscle relaxants and anti-anxiety drugs. It is very important that you do not combine these drugs after your operation. Finally, you cannot drive while you are taking opiates. The faster you stop taking them, the faster you can get your life back to normal. If you would like to learn more about the scientific evidence for how effective pain medications are, click here and you can read the paper written by the National Safety Council on this topic.